the smoke of Satan. Hello and welcome to the Smoke of Satan. My name is Joseph Silla Jr. I'm the writer of Edgy Catholic Fiction. I've written the thriller, When the Wind is Dry, Edgy Catholic Thriller, my uh, comic book and graphic novel, Blind Prophet, and my Christmas novel, Merry Friggin' Christmas, an edgy Christmas comedy, a Christmas gift for atheists. Comes in a naughty edition and the standard edition. Standard edition has kind of a clever way to cover up, obscure some of the uh, naughty language, which is really the major difference between the naughty and the standard version. Okay, so we are up to episode lucky 13, uh, the cause of modernism. So the smoke of Satan, again, comes from uh, this quote from St. Paul the Sixth. It was like in 1971 he said this, so after the promulgation of the new mass, after the closing of Vatican II, been out there for a while, and here's our Pope, St. Paul VI. He says, We would say that through some mysterious crack. No, it's not mysterious. Through some crack, the smoke of Satan has entered the Church of God. There is doubt, uncertainty, problems, unrest, satis dissatisfaction, and confrontation. Okay, so um, Pope Pius X has spent uh, what I covered in the first 12 full episodes of this, which is a whole lot of video, all of what he thinks modernism is, and what is this modernist heresy, which he concludes is the synthesis of all heresies. He lays it out in full detail and depth. And now, he's going to tell you where he thinks it comes from. And it's not a good place. But first, let's talk about traditional theology. Make sure you know what is orthodox, okay? So our orthodox belief is what St. Thomas Aquinas came up with, the traditional theology, that our senses uh, are taken in information and from that information we apply reason and this gives us knowledge this is what the ancient Greeks came up with and that leads to our natural end when we die but St. Thomas said this does not explain the full picture there's also revelation directly from God which is another source of knowledge and we have a supernatural end where we will be judged now the uh, Modernist theologians, they called it Nouvelle Theologie and Ressourcement, they said, we don't think you need this. We say that uh, grace perfects nature and uh, faith is the perfection of reason, so we really don't need this extra thing. We can cover it all in our senses and our reason and grace is part of reason and, and then we get into to the knowledge, okay? Uh, but when you do this, you don't come up with the same answers. So they said, we're going to do this. We're going to go back and resource. Resource mon is a French word for resourcing. Go back, and we're going to look at all the old documents of the fathers of the church, and we're going to read it through this kind of a lens, rather than what St. Thomas Aquinas did and the scholastics, um, theologians. And uh, you come up with different answers. Every Heresy from old raises its ugly head in this new way of thinking. And uh, the, uh, many of these theologians um, who worked in, at Vatican II and wrote these documents, you know, they're not even Catholics anymore. There's a big to-do right now about uh, Vatican II. It's coming up now. They're, they're, they're talking about it. So, like, uh, Dr. Taylor Marshall had brought it up, and, uh, you know, now we've got uh, Archbishop Vigano bringing it up, we've got uh, Bishop Schneider bringing it up, and now uh, Cardinal Brandmuller was bringing it up. So we've got some, you know, pretty heavy people thinking about it, and 50 people just wrote a document, you know, 
uh, signed a, a document to, to thanking Archbishop Vigano for bringing this up, that there's problems with Vatican II. So this, I am not like out on a ledge here with this Vatican II thing having problems. And I think it's the smoke of Satan that St. That Saint Paul VI was talking about. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it's becoming a thing. So uh, maybe my little smoke of Satan program was kind of a little bit ahead of the curve here. But right now, everybody's talking about Vatican II. And they're talking about it because there's a lot of problems. In it. And one of the things they mentioned today on Taylor Marshall's show was that, uh, hey, you know, one of these guys who wrote the, one of the documents of Vatican II, he, he was a, a, a priest who left the priesthood and then was living with another priest for a while, and then he got married to a woman. So it's like, you know, these were not faithful Catholics who wrote the documents. There's something wrong. And I, I think, you know, they're talking about either getting rid of the whole thing or making some changes. Something has to happen. Because what Pius X was fighting against is what was implemented in Vatican II. I, I think if you look at my analysis of the smoke of Satan, and just really reading through the Prescendi Dominici Gregus, and you say, they're not fighting this anymore. What happened? What happened? Why was it so important to Pius X? And now nobody thinks it's important, right? So, all right, let's get started on the meat of our, uh, our talk today, the cause of modernism. Let's get down to this, all right? So, that the proximate and immediate cause consists in a perversion of the mind cannot be open to doubt. The remote causes seem to us to be reduced to two, curiosity and pride. Well, that is a uh, pretty caustic <laughs> assessment. You know, pulling no punches here from Pius X. The, the, the proximate and immediate cause consists of, in a perversion of the mind. Okay? And then we have curiosity and pride. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit about curiosity here. Okay. Curiosity by itself, if not prudently regulated, suffices to explain all errors. Such is the opinion of our predecessor, Gregory the Sixteenth, who wrote, A lamentable spectacle is that presented by the aberrations of human reason when it yields to the spirit of novelty when against the warning of the apostle it seeks to know beyond what it is meant to know, and when relying too much on itself, it thinks it can find the fruit outside the church wherein truth is found without the slightest shadow of error. So, he's quoting back, uh, his predecessor of happy memory here, Gregory the Sixteenth, and saying, look, you know, the truth is in the church. You know, all this uh, curiosity, well, you know, the old saying, curiosity killed the cat. Well, it's not so good for the modernist theologian either. Okay, so let's talk a little about pride. But it is pride which exercises an incomparably greater sway over the soul to blind it and plunge it into error. And pride sits in modernism as in its own house, finding sustenance everywhere in its doctrines and an occasion to flaunt itself in all its aspects. So we've got <laughs> curiosity and pride. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about pride. Okay. It is pride which fills modernists with that confidence in themselves and leads them to hold themselves up as the rule for all. Pride which puffs them up with that vain glory which allows them to regard themselves as the sole possessors of knowledge and makes them say, inflated with presumption, 
We are not as the rest of men, and which to make them really not as other men leads them to embrace all kinds of the most absurd novelties. It is pride which rouses in them the spirit of disobedience and causes them to demand a compromise between authority and liberty. It is pride that makes of them the reformers of others while they forget to reform themselves and which begets their absolute want of respect for authority, not accepting the supreme authority. Okay, well, the supreme authority is God and Jesus Christ, and they don't accept that either, right? So they, they, they want to be in charge. We've talked about that. They want to, you know, they, they see this problem between authority and liberty. We're not free to do what we want to do because what you want to do is wrong, right? So, so they have problems with, with these things, and it's all a matter of pride, according to Pius X. I agree. Okay, so here's some objections from Pius X, okay? Hence, venerable brethren, it will be your first duty to thwart such proud men, to employ them only in the lowest and obscurest offices, to hire, the, the higher they try to rise, the lower let them be placed, so that their lowly position may deprive them of the power of causing damage. Sound your young clerics, too, most carefully by yourselves and by the directors of your seminaries, and when you find the spirit of pride among any of them, reject them without compunction from the priesthood. Would to God that this had always been done with the proper vigilance and constancy. Okay, so here he's telling them, you know, we got to get rid of these prideful people. It's a problem. But we stop. We don't do this anymore. <laughs> okay, so this is a problem. And you've seen the church have issues, and it's just become, you know, worse and worse. Okay? So we need to raise this banner and get back to this. Okay, so intellectual cause, the intellectual cause is ignorance, okay? If we pass from the moral to the intellectual causes of modernism, the first which presents itself and the chief one is ignorance. Yes, these very modernists who pose as doctors of the church, who puff out their cheeks when they speak of modern philosophy and show such contempt for scholasticism, have embraced the one with all its false glamour because their ignorance of the other has left them without the means of being able to recognize confusion of thought and to refute sophistry. Their whole system, with all its errors, has been born of the alliance between faith and false philosophy. That's pretty... <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want to be the one receiving a, a message like this from the Pope, you know, but um, this is where, you know, Pope Pius X was calling him out and saying... You can't make this modern philosophy consistent with our faith. It doesn't work. It's based on agnosticism. It's based on atheism. You can't take God out of theology and get the right answers. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And, we, and they have disdain for the scholastic philosophers, the scholastic theologists, theologians, the scholastic theologians. And... Because they're ignorant of it, and they, you know, they just, uh, that's just something old that Thomas Aquinas back in uh, the 1200s came up with, so, so, you know, that's not what we want. We want something new, you know, and it's this attraction to novelty, attraction to what's new, we're going to do something new, right? And it causes all kinds of problems, because it's not true. It's a reductionism that doesn't work. You can't, you can't do what they're doing and get the right answers. Okay. So that's our episode 13. It's a nice little short one.
But uh, you get the idea, okay? And uh, we will get into our next episode, which will be the methods of propagandism, which we're going to talk about all the ways that the modernists are trying to get their message out that basically change the church and change the faith, which I believe they succeeded in doing in Vatican II. That council had a bunch of preparatory documents that were prepared that were orthodox. And these the modernist uh, philosophers who they led into the church, they led into that council, threw them out and created their own documents. That's a, that's a matter of history of the council. So, I mean... It, it, there, there were, you know, like, like, I don't have to go through every document and point out that the whole Vatican II Council is suspect because of the way it was, was formed and the way, you know, the Pope came out at the end and said there's nothing really dogmatic that we're addressing here. So it's like you don't even have to believe any of it. Well, I think we should just, you know, scratch it out, you know, and uh, not believe any of it. Okay, anyway, my name is Joseph Silla Jr. Again, I'm a writer of edgy Catholic fiction. I'm dabbling here in uh, theology, which is not my strong suit, but I'm reading a document that's been forgotten, Vicendi Dominici Gregus, from a saint of the church. So I don't think I can go too wrong, because mostly what I'm doing is quoting him. And I don't think anybody's ever said, St. Pius X, St. Pius X was full of beans, and we, he never should have written Prescendi Dominici Greg. No, they're not saying that. I mean, there might be some modernist uh, uh, priests and, and uh, religious who might be thinking that, but they don't ever come out and say. Okay, so I think I'm on pretty safe ground. All right. When the Word is Dry is my uh, Edgy Catholic Thrower, my comic book, Blind Prophet, and my uh, Christmas book here, Merry Freaking Christmas, an Edgy Christmas comedy, Christmas gift for atheists. Joseph Silva Jr. again. I'll see you next time on the Smoke of Sea. God bless.